I'm Tass Mellis of The Starters. This is Ben Golliver with the Open Floor Podcast. Hi, I'm Kristen Ludlow from NBA Inside Stuff. I'm OJ Anobi of the Toronto Raptors. Hey, I'm Elena Donon, and welcome to the Double Clutch. Double Clutch. Double Clutch. Double Clutch. Double Clutch Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Back to the Double Clutch podcast. I'm one of your usual hosts, Mike Miller, and tonight I'm joined by Mr. Hugh Hopkins. Hi, Mike. Have you had any issues with your League Pass app recently? I, I don't seem to be getting any games. What, what's going know? on? <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> well, uh, for everyone listening, uh, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know that coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, has taken the world um, by the throat essentially and and lots of chaos everywhere um, stay indoors I think is the answer no <laughs> what is it called uh, social distancing which is fine for us because we're recording via Skype across the country anyway um, made me laugh actually did you see uh, Zach Lowe was having technical difficulties because he wasn't used to recording pods um, you know, yeah remotely. he's been he's he- he said that he's been preferring to do them in person uh, in yeah. the past few months or whatever. But yeah, I guess he's got to get used to a different way of working now. Yeah, definitely. Um, so and yeah, one of the uh, one of the, the the many leagues to stop play uh, is the NBA, which was a bit of a shock. Um, but let's before we jump all into that, um, quick reminder: uh, follow us on all social media platforms at Double Clutch UK. Email us admin at doubleclutch UK. Check out the website www doubleclutch.uk. I think that covers all of that bit, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, so uh, COVID-19 has uh, stopped the NBA. So it all sort of kicked off um, March the 11th when uh, the Utah Jazz were set to play the the, uh, the Thunder. And shortly before tip-off, both teams left the floor and it turned out that a Jazz player who was not present at the arena had tested positive. Uh, so the game was cancelled. Uh, we now know that player was Rudy Gobert. Uh, all kinds of noise about that. Um, later game that evening was the Pelicans. I want to say Mavs, Pelicans, Pelicans versus someone um, was cancelled. Kings, that was it. Uh, was cancelled before tip off because one of the refereeing team, the officiating team, had been <laughs> at a Jazz game a few days earlier. So potentially. Uh, came had come into contact with the virus, so that was pulled as well. And then very quickly the next day, the entire league was suspended. Um, what were what were your initial reactions then to to the league taking this um, drastic but necessary step to help prevent the spread of of COVID nineteen? Initial reactions were absolutely do the right thing. Um, mm-hmm. I think in the states and over here. Uh, in the UK, I think a lot of people have been very critical of the respective governments of how long they've sort of taken to do things. Um, yep. I think the moment someone, especially in those situations where you've got a large number of people, the the moment you've got someone who has been infected and is, you know, uh, positive on the tests, then I think you simply do need to just shut it down It's it's no long, you know, they, they could be elderly people in there. They could be uh, young people. I mean, young people are apparently better protected. Um, and because I'm not a scientist, I'm not going to try and explain, actually. But um, certainly, you know, the older people are, are more vulnerable to this. So if there's plenty of people over the age of 60 in the arena, then that's that's not going to be good for them. It's not going to be a good look for the league. Um, certainly, I know, like, in, in my nine to five in my work uh we've had to cancel a bunch of events um and i'm pretty sure it's the same with other organizations and companies up and down the country so i i think it's absolutely the right thing to do until we get a be- bit of bit of a better grip on this across the globe um thankfully it looks like china is starting to turn a corner with its with how well it's managing it um mm-hmm. But it doesn't look like we're the the UK or or even uh, the USA are, are very close to to turning a corner. So I think for now it's important if anyone is showing any signs, just shut it down. And it, and for the foreseeable future, I guess the USA is a bit ahead of us in terms of self isolation and social distancing. I think there's a, a less of a um, less of a push on that in the UK at the moment but of course that could all change within hours uh so yeah it's it's scary time in the world um but 
I think I think the NBA has done the right thing, and it was one of the first major leagues in the USA to to do anything. Obviously, it had to do something because a player was infected, but I think it did the right thing. And then you saw the domino effect of so many other leagues shutting things down. NCAA March Madness tournament isn't going ahead. Maybe it will go. It maybe they'll reschedule it. Maybe it'll. No, I've seen that. Um, it's cancelled. It's, it's been. My can- is cancelled. It's, it's been cancelled, but I think players who are seniors this year, I think, yeah. I think that they are eligible again. There's conversations about. I, don't, I haven't. Heard, I haven't seen it announced, but there's definitely conversations as to whether or not they can retain an, an additional year of eligibility so they can compete next year, um, which would. You know, for them, which would be good, but at the same time, f- denies them another year potentially of of earning a living playing. I guess the game. I, I guess it's up to them, really, isn't it? Because yeah. uh, certainly, um, you know, some of the some of the top prospects. I mean, you see it more in the in the NBA rather than the, the WNBA, but certainly the top prospects they just go straight into the yeah. NBA. And mm-hmm. uh, but in the WNBA. It is getting more that if you are likely to be selected in the top 10, you'll go. But um, certainly the earning potential isn't as high in the WNBA in your first seasons. Uh, And we saw Sabrina Ionescu, who could have gone number one in last year's draft. She went back and did another, has done it her senior year and will will probably go number one this year if she Mm -hmm. opts to go in the draft. But we'll see what happens maybe she'll want to go back and play March Madness she's she wrote a story about unfinished business last year uh, because they fell short of actually winning the tournament so who knows what's going to happen but I think it's absolutely the right thing and I guess the league is shut down for 30 days now isn't it Until... it'll be reviewed in 30 days yeah so yeah. One of the so that immediately you know the reaction was this is the right thing to do, but now the dust has sort of settled. There's there's a, a school of thought that the NBA took too long to act. They tried to they tried to milk it as long as they could in terms of getting an income, retaining some sort of of you know product essentially. Um, do you think that's fair? Um, I think they did pretty much what every. Business, pro- business for profit does uh, all over the world. Um, they're not the only ones to have kept things going for as long as possible. The NBA it shut down when someone was infected, but you know it was only um, hours later um, that uh, that FIBA c- cancelled a bunch of their planned competitions for the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and before it, FIBA had just said, "Okay, we're." We're postponing this game. We're cancelling this game. We're gonna. Uh, this game's gonna go ahead, and they put a bunch of games behind closed doors. So they weren't the only ones. They, you know, all of these leagues, they they need to run because if you think about it, it's not just the top players that are being paid. It's not just the owners that are earning money, but it's people in the arena. Um, th- these are people who rely on these things for jobs. So it's. It's a difficult decision because it's it's a difficult look because you're not just doing it for your own profit and your own greed. You are employing people, um, and I I've had a, the opportunity to talk to some uh, some WNBA players in the past few days because a lot of them come over to Europe uh, mm-hmm. when the WNBA isn't being played. Um, I've spoken to a lot of them and. You know, a lot of them are concerned about the fact that their season is being cancelled early. That's going to be a lot less pay in their pockets because the WNBA guys, they don't earn as much. Uh, so, and and beyond that, you also have lower tier players. Uh, I spoke to Hannah Shaw, uh, who's a GB international. She doesn't play in the WNBA, but she play, She was playing in Italy, northern Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a scary few a scary few days for her because she played... She struggled to get out of the country, didn't she? Yeah, she played a game on the Saturday uh, and then while they were on the bus leaving, they found out that that team had to go into quarantine and essentially shut everything down. So they they played that game and on the way back, they were told that that team would no longer be playing. Um, 
And then one day it was terrifying. Apparently they walked into the game and there was loads of people in hazmat suits testing all of them, testing the temperature. So, you know, the, even though the NBA took took its time, I think leagues all over the world and businesses all over the world were taking their time because it just went like that, didn't it, really? It was so quick. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing that made me, you know... I. I I'm one of these people that j- tends to cope with things with an element of humour. Um, and yeah. if I could, if, if, so if I could use a, a meme at this point, it would be the Anchorman. Well, that escalated quickly because you know a week ago the original guidelines coming out from the NBA was you know no more high fives, guys, use fist bumps. And then <laughs> one week later, nothing. We are done. Yeah. This game does not exist for the foreseeable future. Um, it, it's just it's it's crazy how quickly things escalated it went from just oh we'll see what we can do to no no done this this is over and of course um the announcement that it was rudy gobert went down like a a ton of bricks because what on monday was it he was uh he was uh, in the in the media um press conference and and was touching the microphones again dealing with it with a with an element of humor and ultimately creating more of a, a stir than he perhaps would have done any other way and it's you know there's no way we know whether or not he contracted it then or whether he passed it on that way at all it's you know you can only speculate there um but it's forever going to be linked to him of course donovan mitchell now has it um a teammate and the stuff came out from the locker room there um your thoughts on rudy and his situation i mean it's Hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? It's you, you know uh, we've we we can all look at him and say he wasn't taking it seriously enough. But I am I imagine the majority of people who accused him of not taking it seriously enough were all making jokes about buying mm-hmm. toilet paper. They were all making jokes about uh, about you know if if someone in the room coughs, they said oh coronavirus. You know there's the, mm-hmm. ev- everybody does it because it's a way of dealing with the situation and. I've seen. I saw one tweet. Oh, I forget who it was now. Um, I apologise for not uh, not citing this correctly. But one of the reporters was in the room. Uh, I think his microphone was there, and he said that he felt that him Rudy touching the microphones was sort of a. Um, it was a a moment of solidarity. You know, the okay. the league the league had told them not to be near the press to get some distance yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know so so it this was rudy's way of saying ah it's all right i'm with you guys you know we're all in this together and it was just like it was just it was it, it was just a joke it was just a bit mm-hmm. a bit of fun and i do feel bad for him um i think he's he's obviously upset a few players in his own locker room like you alluded to uh woge had a story that came out afterwards saying that he wasn't uh, he he had annoyed a lot of his teammates because he was they, he was going around touching all their stuff and earlier in the week and joking about it i think it's we've all come to realize how serious this situation is um i think everybody is you know yeah you, there there are the groups of people who went out and st- stockpiled toilet paper and hand sanitizer and uh, bought all the rice on the shelves and all pasta on the shelves. Um, you know, maybe they were taking it seriously. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're in the right, but it's the 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 rest of us in the world. We sort of have to take things with a pinch of salt and have to have to do things at our own pace. You know, I mm-hmm. I don't think it's entirely fair how badly he's been dragged over the coals because um, I very much doubt he was the only one who was uh, taking this lightly. Yeah, no, I, I, I think were, he was just the one who was perhaps most public uh, yeah. in the way he's, he's, he's been sort of seen to be taking it lightly. Um, certainly the fact that they're, you know, anonymous sources are coming out and saying things went on in the locker room. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened in at least a few other of the, the 29 other teams. Um so obviously the season's been delayed for at least 30 days. They're going to review the situation at that point. It leaves a few options on the table. Yeah. Um, so let's let's sort of bounce some ideas around. What sort of how how do you see the NBA? You know, if if it is possible to save this season, 
Um, and obviously that is not the fundamental um, you know, the, <laughs> the priority here. The priority here is to, to stem the spread of this virus. Um, but what? How how would you like to see the NBA come back? Are you expecting it to just be okay? We pick up from game sixty four, sixty five, or whatever you were on before. We just push everything back by thirty days or so. Or are you of the mind of you know what? Let's let's cut the regular season here. Start with playoffs in mid April and go from there. What you know, or, or any other option? I mean, yeah, no, nobody knows at the moment, do they? Because yeah, but what would you like to see? What, what no, no, yeah, yeah, I, I know. It's um, it's very difficult to say because it depends on when they come back. Um, if it's thirty days, if we shut down for thirty days, that's the equivalent of what twelve games, something in that region. Uh, maybe mm. some slightly less, some slightly more. Most teams only have fifteen to eighteen games left. So mm-hmm. if we come back straight after thirty days, then personally, I think we could do a you know that we've been toying with that seven to ten play in tournament yep i think you know those that those seven to ten those are the ones who who will be possibly most aggrieved um for the season just ending Mm -hmm. so because they may have stood a chance to get into the those final playoff spots so i think let them play it out and the teams with the higher seed have have the home court advantage one game play in uh, if you win one game, you're th- you're through and you're in those final spots. The rest of them, I think, you just need to you just need to crack on with the playoffs, because while NBA owners and governors or whatever they want to be called these days, while they <laughs> while they, yeah. while they are very keen to obviously make as much profit as possible, I was listening to Mark Lazary uh, of the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, on uh, Howard Beck's podcast, and he was saying, "No, let's let's do it. Let's let's do all the eighty-two games." Well, actually, in some instances, I actually prefer the play- the um, the Olympics, and I would I would mm-hmm. prefer to see the Olympics go ahead rather than a delayed uh, a delayed NBA season. Because I think the you know just just personally, I I enjoy international basketball, but also the Olympics is a great celebration of of all sport, even though a lot of non-basketball sports suck. You know, I think it's, (laughs) I think it's, um, you you know, we can't be selfish about this, Mike. So uh, I think it's important to to do the Olympics if we can, because actually it could be a coming together of the world, Mm -hmm. like, oh shit, we just dodged a bullet, you know? I think that, I think that might be nice for the world. Um, rather than all the greedy owners just getting as milking as much money as possible and also if let's let's be real here it's, it's not going to come back straight after 30 days yeah you're going to need some kind of pre you know like warm up schedule exhibition schedule just to get your your feet back under you these guys aren't even practicing together at the minute well well not just that i don't, i don't think the plan is to bring them back after 30 days the my understanding of the statement is that they are going to assess at 30 mm-hmm. days. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that's when you need to sort of figure out logistics and make some decisions. Mm-hmm. So I don't, personally, also, I don't see them being in a position to... When you, So I've been doing a, tr- trying to do a little bit of reading about this. I, I, this is where I absolutely say I am no expert in the matter. But um, <laughs> I've, I've also spoken to one of my friends... Um, uh, on the basketball team, my coach uh, Tom Nibs, he's been helping me out with this a little bit. Um, but it can take anything up to two to fourteen weeks for the worst stages to pass. Now, fourteen okay. weeks is a long time. Uh, it's essentially well, it's more than three months, isn't it? China, once they found out that there were a few cases start- starting to spread, they basically shut down the country for fifty days. And they poured hand sanitizer everywhere and basically washed down everything you can. Um, and everybody, the, the whole world was, was the, the whole country was stopped. Mm-hmm. And then only now, this past like day or two, they've said, oh, we, we, we're getting a grip on this. You know, things are starting to turn for us. Now that's 50 days plus a few days before that when the, the virus started spreading. I think... The UK and the USA w- were well behind China, not just in terms of the timelines, but also the the seriousness that both countries have taken it 
um, mm-hmm. since it started. So I actually think it's going to be, you know, 60 days, maybe more, before we're actually at the stage where we can start getting out into big public areas like basketball games again. That That's just my my theory. Um, obviously, I'm no expert on the matter. In which case, I think we're, that's going... Where are we now? We're in March? So, yeah, we're still in March. <laughs> so, About halfway through. <laughs> so that takes us up to halfway through May, at least. Um, which would which be is, end, of the, end of the second round. Just yeah. Before the conference finals, really. Well, maybe even start the conference finals. Exactly. So then what does the... If we go straight into the playoffs, what does the playoffs look like? Mm-hmm. It'd be maybe first couple of series, best of three, then last one, best of five, something like that. It's We just don't know enough information, but I'd like to see them play the playoffs and if and maybe sort out those first, first, you know, seven through ten. See if we can get some sort of tournament just to settle that a bit. So if, if we did, if things were done differently... Um, would you place an asterisk on the season? Um, you know, like they did in the ninety eight, ninety nine one when uh, a certain San Antonio franchise. Hold won on, there. hold on, hold on. No, that's that's not an asterisk. Because <laughs> you, you could also place an asterisk on when when was the other one? When was the other lockout? Oh, well, the other lockout. I want to say two thousand and seven off the top of my head, but I can't remember. Yeah, there was, there was another one, wasn't there? With it, but they still played about 70, 70 odd games. This, you know, so, sixty games. I think it was. Was it sixty? Oh, there you go. Not the fifty, though. No, it, no, no. <laughs> this is the Matumbo finger wag coming out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's, no. let's not get into this because actually, because yeah. because actually, we, we ended up like actually winning, like you know, four against an eight seed. We we. <laughs> <We've>, <laughs> ah, I can't believe you, you riled me on that. Sorry, <laughs> I, I had to I had to get that in. But sorry, carry the, on. The um, I I think there there will be an asterisk on it. Um, mm. because you know, because anything can happen. Um, in the playoffs, as we've seen time and time again. Um, especially uh, and the the teams that will want to do it most perhaps are those seven to ten teams. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But you know the the Clippers they've been on a bit of a roll recently. They may have uh. I don't know whether they would have caught the Lakers in the final two or three, two or three um, weeks of the regular season, but I think there are there, there is still a lot to play for. So I think there will be a lot of people annoyed if the season just shuts and goes straight into the playoffs. But but if we if we do the playoffs later and then we do and we try and cram it around the Olympics and then we go straight into another season, I think that's. I think people. I think we need to think long term. You know, there might be some complete reassessment of how how the the season works and how how logistics work for a season going forward. After this, we we could see some big changes to come. I reckon. Yeah. Well, um, they just they just had the Sloan Sports Conference and yeah. uh, Hawks CEO Steve Coonan. Um, push the idea of moving the seasons back to well, moving the season a couple of months back, so we start around Christmas time, run through till sort of, you know, July August time, uh, which is not obviously his original idea. We've heard it lots of places before. Um, do you see any value in doing something like that in terms of you know we've gone through a season? And I get that it's a single season across well seventy um, odd uh, in NBA history where we've seen um, viewership reduce, retract. Do you th- do you think the NBA should even be considering not directly competing against the likes of the NFL? No, I, I, I think the the league needs to adapt a little bit. Um, not because I think there's anything wrong with it. I think there's a number of reasons why the viewership is down. The, yeah, you know the we can we can go into if you want, but um, I think. I think the peaks and the valleys throughout the re- regular season, they've always been the same. You've always had a bit of a, you know, when the f- season first tips off, you always have a bit of a flurry. Then it dips down up until Christmas. And then after Christmas, up until the sort of trade deadline, that starts to get a bit busy. Then it dips off again. And then 
final push to the playoffs and then the playoffs. That's just how the season has always gone. I mm-hmm. do, th- and and with that setup, I think it's it's risen to where it is, which is it's not beating NFL, but I think it's in a much better position than it was, you know, when we first started watching the 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 league. So, I would I would like to see them assess it. I'd like to see perhaps different tournaments to peak interest at different times. Um. Well, so you're you're up for this in season tournament. Yeah, well, I don't think we necessarily need to. Uh, I don't think we necessarily need to stop gameplay, um, to, to sort of set up a completely different structure. Mm. I think we can sort of do it. Like we we've had debates in the past about whether or not, um, you know, whether or not the sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not conferences, divisions matter, um. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> and I think I think they you don't, know but carry on <laughs> again not not the time for that one. We're not, we're not but really um, <laughs> but I think that that's something that we could look into you know we could make make divisional tournaments and um it sort of have it so rather than taking huge chunks out of the season you can still have that eighty two game setup if you want but um but for two weeks. You're only going to play people in your division at at one point of the season, you know, or so, something along those lines. And and in my mind, uh, one of the ideas I had written of, um, that I think we published on Double Clutch. I can't remember. Um, but it was having that two week period, and then all the winners of that, um, of, of those divisional tournaments, then go into a tournament later in the year, um, yeah. and one of my ideas was other leagues around the world so the the basketball africa league um perhaps even some euro league teams could have a similar setup so whoever is that winner from that initial so you're talking like a champions league yeah yeah essentially so, uh, yeah yeah and then whoever is the winner from those initial divisional type tournaments could then have a bigger you know a, a bigger tournament later in the year um i i quite like that idea and I do think the NBA needs to adapt because it is losing a little bit of interest I think that's just because of life you know I think possibly all all leagues are losing a little bit of viewership and interest because there's because, more choices out there yeah there's more not, choices not just, not Pe- just sport sport, sport. <laughs> <I'm talking laughs> not just sport there's there's you know, you know what I mean we've got all these on demand services that that they take up your attention more than they used to you're not just you know, quote unquote, forced to watch what's on in front of you, um, and certainly for, for for us, we get more NBA because it's on demand, and these are like the American viewership figures, whatever. Like, it doesn't take account for things like cord cutting, and I totally get that. Um, but yeah, I kind of see where you're coming from. The the there's something that could be done to freshen up the format, which has been in existence for for so long. Um, I think so yeah. I think the moment you say this is the way it's always done, that's the moment you're losing the battle. Really, I think you need to keep re-energizing something. Um, d- just like with the All Star Game, they they tweak it every so often, and and this year it worked. It might not work in a couple of years' time. We might get bored of it, so tweak it again. I think you know start to think about doing that with the season now. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's certainly this this year, well, the, the nineteen twenty season um, on court. Has been pretty good, barring Very injuries. Good. But in terms of you know Adam Silver's tenure, certainly this is the toughest season he's ever had. And obviously he entered the league, um, I want to say twenty fourteen, uh, at the same time the Donald Sterling yeah. scandal. Yeah. Um, in terms of what's happened this year, though, is this potentially the worst season in NBA history? Because if you look <laughs> at what, what we've got, we've had we had Chandler Parsons go down and well go down banned for twenty five games in the summer for PEDs. Um, the season started with the Daryl Morey tweet and everything that kicked off in China. Then you had uh, DeAndre Ayton, go, uh, 25 game ban for a diuretic. You had John Collins, 25 game ban for uh, a PED. Um, then there was all the officiating, the James Harden dunk. Uh, lots of officiating issues throughout the season. You then obviously had David Stern's tragic passing in, in early January, followed by um, Kobe Bryant later in the same month. Um, so it's it's been a horrific season, and now we've had coronavirus just completely put a put a halt on the league for 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 the foreseeable future. 
I can't I can't think of another year which has experienced so much, um, you know, off off court issues that have have, have impacted a sports league. I think off court, you're you're probably right. Um, I think on court, we've seen some of the best product I I can remember. I mean, you, you know, obviously the Golden State Warriors have been the crowning glory of the NBA in the past few years on court. Um, but actually, there were some elements of the league that was quite poor in in recent years. Um, uh, huge discrepancy in East versus West, uh, and um, just the league trying to come to terms with the fact that you had a bunch of big guys who couldn't do anything and were being played out of the league. But I think this year we've seen that flipped a little bit. We've seen a bit more parity. We've uh, we, we've seen big guys coming to the fray a little bit more. Um, I think there's a, and not just those. You know, there's there's been a ton of good things. They, you, the Golden State Warriors aren't aren't dominant like they were once were. So everything is up for grabs. Everybody's fighting for that top seed. Milwaukee Bucks are doing incredibly well. The Lakers are brilliant. Um, but you've got a lot of other teams vying for position and trying to get into the playoffs. It's it's exciting basketball. But off court, yeah, you you might be right. I mean. We, we, I think even you might be slightly too long, young to, um, <laughs> to, to remember, like, uh, Cheers. <laughs> you know, like at the NBA ABA merger in nineteen seventy six. I think it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, the, I'm, I'm definitely what, too young to remember that. <laughs> that that was um, that was a year when when both leagues actually both leagues were sort of ready to collapse because one couldn't outperform the other so they ended up merging one into the other so that was obviously a good thing that came out of it but um then you had a bunch of drama with um I can't remember the exact details but one team had the had the rights to um Dr J Julius Irving but then they didn't want to pay to join the the league or something, so um, so the, was... the the Nets had the rights to Doctor J, but they owed I think I want to say four or five million in territorial um, that's it f- money to the Knicks. They offered Doctor J to the Knicks, and the Knicks turns out are historically but you know make poor decisions and said you know what no we won't take Doctor J. Uh, you can keep him. We'll rather have the the excellent you know four or five million. So they then sold him to Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> I remember it like I was there. I definitely wasn't. <laughs> but what what I'm saying is that like that time, and also when you think of the the amount of cocaine that was being taken during that time, yeah. and uh, the the which explains the pace of the game, um, <laughs> <laughs> and the and, and the racism that was you know that I think yeah. it's, it's a different yeah. time, so we we can't yeah. really judge it. But certainly in recent memory, it has been the 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 off course stuff has been mm-hmm. horrific. It's been. Yeah one drama to another which it, which is obviously great content um for people like us but at the same time some of these things have been quite horrific you know yeah, no, massively uh, n- none of us wanted great content from from Kobe's passing or David no. Stern's passing or or uh, you know an international war that almost happened between the US and China at the start of the season these these are not uh, these aren't positives are they it's no. it's quite scary yeah, so let's 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 move back to something more positive then. So if let's say if the season he says and then says let's say if the season ends now. <laughs> so let's say if the season ends now, um, the NBA would still have to do awards. It has to surely. So let's let's go through based on what we know now, what we think the awards would go to, uh, who they'd go to. So let's start with um, MVP, and uh, for me, it's it's still Yanis. I don't think LeBron has caught him. Is that the same with you? Yeah. So I'm sort of spoiling my uh, my column for next week. Um... I, I am going to sort of do a a final. Well, at the moment, what we think might be. Well, a fi- you don't have to give your answer if you don't want to spoil the call. No, no, you can, no. You it's, can it's, hold it. it's quite all right. I'm, I'm sure they're very different audiences. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think I think LeBron had had momentum going into this. If with Giannis going down with an injury, I think he was only due to miss a couple of games, but. You know, getting towards the end of the season, do you want to rush him back? Is it worth just leaving him out for a, a few extra games to make sure that there's no residual stuff or against weaker opponents? So he may end up, he might have ended up missing, I don't know, uh, seven games, something like that. If that was the case, LeBron was on such momentum 
that he may have actually caught him. I think there is a possibility that it could have done. That being said, we can only judge on what has happened so far. And what has happened so far is Yanis has wiped the floor with mm-hmm. the rest of the yeah. NBA. And and he's still the MVP for, yep. for me. Uh, no disagreement from me there. Uh, defensive player of the year. So this was a, a bit more up for grabs. Is there anyone in particular that, that jumps out? For, for me, I'm going with the guy with the biggest heart and the most hustle in the league, Marcus Smart. Uh, that's... Who do you think I was going to say? You're just, you're, just, you're just trying to get all the hundreds of Celtics fans that we have just... Uh, just oh, yeah, you know what? That's, that's three pods in a row now being complimentary to the Celtics. So you know what? No, let's let's <laughs> give Giannis the double. <laughs> I I think Giannis is, is well with it, within a shout. I think someone who might not win the award but certainly deserves a first-team nod, in my opinion, is Kyle Lowry. Mm-hmm. I think he's been excellent this year. Um, per- perhaps he's... Well, I think he's been on that sort of Marcus Smart level. He's been such a pest all year. I don't think many people... Even though they're the defending champions, I still don't think enough people have actually watched Toronto Raptors this year because we really don't see enough of them mentioned. But they've got the third best record in the league. Um, and he is... He's leading them in win shares... Uh, the, the team in winches. He's second in scoring. He's only, uh, throughout his career, he's only actually scored, uh, averaged more than 20 points twice. And I think he's at 19.7 this year or something. Uh, so it's his mm-hmm. third highest scoring season. Now I know that, you know, 20 points per game is, is not exactly MVP level and is certainly not a defensive stat. But I just think he's, and it, he continues to be that that annoying short guy in the post that you think, oh, just, you know, mouse in the house. Here you go. Give me the ball. And you just can't move him. You just can't score over him because he's just such a pain in the ass. I, I think he I think he deserves first, a first team nod um, for, for okay. a defensive team. But I think possibly, I think it's possibly Yanis. Maybe Anthony Davis. He's he's played some yeah. good defense this year. But yeah, I would, I would give him the, the double. I'd give Giannis the double. You give him the double. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rookie of the year. It's got to be Jar, isn't it? It's got, it's got to be Jar Morant. At this point, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it was going to be closer than people assumed it would be, but body of work so far. Yeah. Zion just doesn't have time to catch him. Um, coach of the year. Again, because nobody really expected the Toronto Raptors to do as well as they've done this year. Um, you know, they lost. Let, let's be real. They lost probably the best player in the, probably the best player in the league last year. Um, he, you know, he didn't play the whole season. He played whenever the hell he wants. But he is arguably the best player in the league when he plays. They also lost Danny Green, who was like he could have been on a on a second all defensive team last year. Um, and he is a great three point shooter, obviously. Um, and actually, he's learnt to play off the dribble a bit more in recent seasons. He's a very good player as well. They lost two huge pieces, and yet they have the third best record in the league. They're right up there. I think Nick Nurse is is running away with it, personally. You've got no argument from me. Just where everyone thought they'd be at the start of the year, l- losing, like you say, like <laughs> one of the best, if not the best player in the league last year. They lost him. And he's creative. He's, you know, he... He watched. He came over here. He played. He he coached the BBL and learned how to do you know box plus one and uh, and, <laughs> and three two zones and you know he's he's taken and no teams know what to do against it over in the NBA and people might say that it's not real basketball but I tell you why it's working so um you, you know the same people that say it isn't real basketball are the same people that think Harden is the best player in in the league. So I oh, think he is the best player in the league. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, you put okay, I see what I see what demographic you're sniping at now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I I I like James Harden, but um me, me and me and Nick Whitfield we uh, we differ on uh, on on how much praise to give him, I think. Um but yeah, I think he's I think he is possibly has the mantle for the best coach in the league generally at the moment. I think mm-hmm. 
Pop has slipped off a little bit. Um, he's obviously still up there and, and can probably outcoach most other coaches. Um, you obviously have Eric Spolstra and Rick Carlisle, but Nick Nurse is... Nick Nurse could be one of the great coaches in the next few years that we end up putting up on a pedestal, you know, in the history of the game, I reckon. Yeah, no, I'd, I, I, I'd like to see more than, you know, two seasons work before I go that far, but he is certainly innovative, um, unafraid to try new things, and is just able to, to get the best from, from guys you would never even mm. have heard of in most other franchises. Um, and he's able to just get Ws. He he puts you know he's dealt with significant injuries yeah. across that roster this season, and they're still right up pa- there. Pascal Siakam and uh, and Kyle Lowry, both of them have only played fifty two and fifty three games respectively. You know they they've missed a good a good chunk of time, not just from them but from the whole team. Yeah, the backers missed time. Um, Gazol's missed a, a huge chunk. Um, okay. This one's going to be a lot more open, I think. Uh, six man of the year. So I didn't really have an answer for this one. So what I'm just going to do is just chat about one of my favourite players in the league, and that's T. Oh, and that's T. J. McConnell, <laughs> right? Oh, T. J. McConnell is a less talented white Chris Paul. <laughs> <laughs> he. I didn't think you were going Chris Paul. That's He okay. comes on and he just barks orders at whoever is on. He is basically the perfect point guard for when it when you don't have a star on the floor. Because he... You, you remember what J.J. Barea was like a few years ago when he was basically the only guy helping Dirk. Um, there was... There's just... He he comes off the bench and he sort of points everybody in the position. There's no other good players on the floor, and they they've been without uh, the the Pacers have been without um, a fully healthy Victor Oladipo and also Malcolm Brogdon at different times this this season. So they can just he can just go in and you know that he's not going to turn the ball over very much. He's not going to make too many mistakes and he'll make the right read on offense and on defense. If there's an opening in the lane, he will go for it. He he isn't a, a, a world-leading shooter, but he can hit a three. And he is one of the best passes, I think, most underrated passes um, in, in the league. I, I think he's incredible. And the fact that he gives up so much height, but plays with so much tenacity. I Yeah, he hasn't got the, the numbers to be a six man, but in my heart, he's six man of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I was, I was not expecting that. Although you have professed many love for him. Um, people like Dennis Schrauder deserve a shout. I think they've been yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, he's been good. Uh, in fact, that whole OKC team has just been, you know, and that's a, that, that situation is another one like the Raptors where you did not think that team would be this good at this point. Um, other guys, Lou Williams is been the name that gets thrown out every year, but he's just not had the re- yeah. he's not had the numbers this year. He's not even going to get them now. Um, so Harrell obviously is taking away some of the, the shine from him. I've even seen people talking about Derek Rose, who for me just doesn't cut it at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've generally I sometimes let my personal bias of Derek Rose slip in. I don't I I'm not a, the biggest fan of him, but. But I just don't see that he's done enough this this no. year. He's he's played well. He's he's had a good career after so many bad injuries, um, and I'm I'm pleased for him from that respect. But I just don't think he's, yeah, I, I don't think he necessarily deserves it uh, based on his play this year. Um, I like Lou Williams. I again, I don't. I think he's slipped off a little bit. I think earlier in the year, my choice would have been Montrez Harrell. I think. Um, He's become, he's become a better post player. He still only has like one or two moves, but they're usually productive. Um, he's become a good passer, and people often say that he's a bad defender. I think I think he's pretty damn quality on that end of the. I, I think he's often the victim, um, because he's normally the person getting dunked on, or he's normally undersized he's, rim he's, protector. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's and he's. And he's normally the help rotation, and then nobody covers his help. Um, I don't think that's his fault. I think he's 
he's usually making the right play most of the time. Um, but yeah, his, his scoring is way up this season. I think I think he could be in with a good show. Okay, uh, most improved. I've I've heard noise suggesting Luca should be considered for this. He's not my pick, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, there's those players every year, isn't there? I mean, I think in Steph Curry's second MVP season, someone said, "Oh, we should give him, we should give him the most improved," you know. And then, and then, who was it? And of course, you know, you've got to consider Harden in that case because because his points have gone way up. It's but and Luca's the same, but I think. Uh, Maybe I'm a bit biased because I actually really like this guy, but maybe he's just like I, I sort of almost expected. Maybe not entirely what he's achieved this season, but I think I expected him to take another step up this year, because last year he was the phenom that a lot of Americans weren't expecting because because they don't watch European basketball, but um. Yeah, I think that that first year he really learnt the ropes. He came into this season with a slightly better uh, NBA body um, and he's got a better player alongside him this year. Uh, in, in Chris Stapps, he's not f- fully returned to the level that he was, but he's certainly, in the past few weeks, he's been playing incredibly well. I think uh, I think it's worth a shout, but... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not convinced. Oh, I don't necessarily have a better answer. So for for me, it's it's Bam Adebayo. I just think he's just actually a, yeah yeah you're right on that one. Just just Bam, become a Bam force. Is and he's and he's plays a little bit like um he's got a bit more height and he's got a bit more length, um, but he plays a little bit like sort of Draymond Green did in those in those peak Golden State years where he'll bring the ball up occasionally. He'll, you know, he'll grab a rebound and just go and he'll almost set up the offense. And that's something that I really like about him. He, he's played excellent defense against Yanis, against uh, uh, Anthony Davis. He... Where he gives up height as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, And he can really shoot the three. I think he's I think he's incredible. Yeah, that's that's a very good shout. I I'm I'm on board there. Cool, that's good. Um so not much left to cover now, so we've potentially got a lot of free time on our hands. What are you gonna do with yours? Um so I downloaded I'm very lucky I've got a very basic sky package and it they've I think they're uh, I think they're responding pretty well to the fact that they know a lot of people are gonna be working from from home. Uh so they've they've put up all the sort of a bunch of different um, US comedy series that you can download and stuff. Uh, so today I downloaded Thirty Rock. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll probably plow through that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and um, watch some old games as well, like because I do enjoy watching. I mentioned it uh, a couple of days ago, but I do enjoy watching that 2014 final. <laughs> that was just a good year, wasn't it? Almost needs um, an asterisk by it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it'd be, it, some old games would be good. Uh, it's definitely on my list. I'm going to go back and try and watch some of the games I missed from this season because you just, yeah. it's just impossible to keep on top of them all. Um, if you've got Amazon Prime, uh, check out On the Shoulders of Giants, which is uh, Kareem oh, Abdul-Jabbar um, documentary about the, the Harlem Renaissance uh, basketball team, so about oh. 1939. It is really good, really well put together. My favourite scene was the opening scene, which is basically, I'm trying to think who's in it. There's um, so obviously Kareem's there, Bill Russell, Jerry West, um, and a couple of others. There's someone from the Bulls there. I can't remember who it is. Might might be. No, I can't remember who it is. But anyway, they're talking about who, what the greatest team was ever, essentially. And then it introduces the story of of the team that no one's heard of, the Harlem Renaissance, and and basically their story. You know, it's a time when jazz was exploding. There was still sort of real racial tension and and prejudice and lynchings and things like that in the country. Um, So some pretty harrowing bits, but it's a fantastic documentary. Definitely, if if you are looking for stuff to check out, that is one. I'm talking to people listening and watching now. Um, Yeah, other than that, I've still not finished 
the last season of Stranger Things because the NBA tipped <laughs> off. So I'm going to go back and watch things that, like that's that. That's the thing. Like you, you, you're cut from the same cloth as I am, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are. Um, like when the NBA season is on, I just, <laughs> I just, yeah, sort of tune mm-hmm. out of pop culture for a few months. And uh, and even in the summer, it's becoming harder because I've I've been following the WNBA so much more in recent seasons. I feel like I've I've missed a, a lot from the past three years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, and yeah, pretty much since Game of Thrones ended, I've sort of just tuned out of all pop culture. Um, so it'll be good to catch up on that. I've been watching a bit more BoJack Horseman recently. Okay. I don't know whether you watched oh, yeah, that. That's watched, good I've managed to keep up to date with that because it's such a nice short series. Yeah, it's useful, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I've also uh, got some books that I'm going to be reading. Um, the uh, one that I've, I've, I'm very keen to start now. I'm currently reading Malcolm Gladwell's book, but yeah. once I finish that off in the next he few said days... That, that was now, the new I'm, book he did, wasn't it? Strangers. Uh, talking, sort of talking to Strangers, strangers. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good, I must say. Have you read Outliers? Um, no, I haven't read that one. Out- it's good. I found Outliers very, very good. A lot of basketball ideas in that as well though but um yeah outliers okay. i thought it was very very good check definitely check that okay out. i'll i'll check that one um no i got i got shoe game from a friend yeah um is it shoe game shoe dog shoe dog yeah, yeah shoe dog from a from a friend uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna have a read of that one have you got that one? Oh yeah he says hitting his microphone i'm just uh popping that out for the camera to see just digging it out of my books there you go very good. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, I'm mate. looking forward to, the, to reading that one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good book actually. Like the, the the story, the origins of Nike. I'm not going to spoil it spoil it for you. Um, yeah. but let's just say there's a couple of companies out there who missed out big time on what he could bring to the table. Um, so there's a lot of things to be getting on with. There's a couple of books I want to read. Uh, I can't remember what it's called now. It's um, it came out last summer and I started it and got about three. There we go. Uh, Range which is about uh, early specialization versus generalism, generalization and how that affects okay. success levels, um, which is really quite a weird uh, twist, uh, but and a really weird tangent to take. Um, so on that note, we should probably finish. But um, just yeah. before we do, uh, give a quick shout out to Basketball England, who did an article this week yeah. about the best uh, podcasts in the UK to listen to for basketball. And we made the list, which we're very grateful and humbled um you know for for putting this in there thank you very much we appreciate it uh we appreciate people listening and we'll keep putting this together um if like i said at the start if you are not following us on social media it's at double clutch uk uh email us admin at double clutch dot uk and the website is www.doubleclutch.uk dot uk um anything before you we close it off or you good to go well i think it's gonna be yeah i think the the content is obviously gonna take a slightly different twist in the next few weeks i think we've got a few plans um that we're putting together for some more evergreen content i know josh is planning a couple of um a couple of basketball movie podcasts and uh, a couple of us were talking about doing a, a vince carter career re- retrospective mm-hmm. so uh so even though we're not going to be obviously talking about the latest storylines in the games because because there's only going to be one storyline in the next few weeks um, uh, you know, you you can be sure to tune in to hear some good good basketball content from us. Yep. Coming up. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep listening. We will keep putting stuff out there. Um, on that note, thank you very much for listening uh, to this episode, and we'll catch you soon. Peace.